Desmond Swain. Madam Deputy Speaker, if you were to ask a scientist how do you stop a virus that spreads through human contact, do not be surprised if he answers telling you that you must stop human contact as far as possible. It falls to us, however, to decide whether the price is worth paying in terms of the misery and unemployment that it generates. A generation marred in their life chances, mind-boggling borrowing that we will have to repay over years, which will diminish proper investment in public services and industry. All that, and for what? The Secretary of State has told us this week that the average number of deaths is consistent with the long-term average for this time of year. 1,600 people die every day, but COVID is by no means chief amongst their killers. And it's no good to say that, well, every other jurisdiction in the world is following basically the same policy. That would strike me as herd stupidity. And speaking of herds, I understand that a number of ministers have questioned the existence of herd immunity, which is odd given that a successful vaccine uh, programme relies on herd immunity, and that is the basket into which the government has placed all its eggs. Throw into this mix, Madam Deputy Speaker, the fact that we appear to be determined to claim every possible death as a COVID death, as if we were in some sort of international league and competition. Add into it the failure to be absolutely upfront about the limitations of the PCR test as a means of tracking the disease. Add into that mix uh, the way that we use large numbers to terrify people. We've been told that intensive care units are at 80% of their capacity. Of course, at this time of year, that is exactly what you would expect them to have. No wonder our constituents are writing to us with ever greater conspiracy theories because our actions defy rational explanation. Now, hallelujah, the consensus has been broken. The Prime Minister has finally resisted the advice that he has been given by the scientists, just at a time that the opposition have embraced it with enthusiasm. Now at least an argument can be had and proper scrutiny and freedom from groupthink will arise. The danger is, if we do not change the way we respond to this disease, in years to come, historians will pick over how it was a prosperous society entered into such a devastating act of self-harm.